Welcome to Unleashed with Eva Melton, where we unleash spiritual principles for victorious living. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Unleashed with Eva Melton. This is Pastor Eva Melton of the Firm Foundation Church in Birmingham, Alabama. I'm so excited about today. We have one of my friends, an author on the phone. First heard of Dr. Jones. Um, I was an associate minister at New Bethel AME Church in Lithonia, Georgia. And at the time, Reverend Dr. Teresa Fry Brown had us to, to read one of his books, Rest in the Storm. And it was kind of like self-care for clergy and caregivers. And so today we have on the phone, Reverend Dr. Kirk Byron Jones. Dr. Jones, how are you today? Eva, I am fantastic. It's great to hear your voice. It's fine to get a chance to talk to you. Yes, yes. So you are one of my favorite authors, so I'm just so elated Thank just you. to be on the phone with you. Um, so where are you physically located? I am in Randolph, Massachusetts, about 10 miles south of Boston. Oh, man. But I hail, but I hail from the bayou <laughs> land of New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So so one thing I did notice that we have in common is that our mothers have the same first name. Yes. Yes. I noticed that. I noticed that during, <laughs> during Facebook. Aura, Aura. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, no, my mother's name was Aura May. Is yours Aura May as well? Aura D. Aura. Aura D. Okay. Yes. Hey, hey, you got it. <laughs> Well, look, my mom, bless her heart, she's with the Lord now. My mom was a holy mess. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah. go ahead and tell our listeners who you are. Oh, goodness. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Pastor, I'm Pastor Eva. I'm a fan of Pastor Eva. <laughs> and I'm multi, a multi-pronged ministry of pastoring and, and, and communication and foundational leadership. Uh, Eva, first, I just want to just say thank you for your um, your witness in You're the sorry. world, your, your energy, your your passion. It comes through uh, Facebook, which is where I keep up with you. <laughs> uh, so congratulations to you for just stepping out there and owning your unique voice. You'll never know how many people notice and are blessed by what you, what, what you do. That's the first thing I want to say. I appreciate that affirmation, Dr. Jones. Now the second thing is I'm just I'm just somebody who uh, <laughs> I've been out there trying to preach. I started preaching when I was uh, 12 years old in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm 60 now, so it's been a few years. And in between that first sermon and this conversation, there have been a lot of people in various places, uh, churches and schools and students and professors and and usher board members and deacons clergy uh, just urging me on, challenging me, blessing me with their affirmation uh, and questions and and constructive criticism. And so whatever I do, whether it's preaching, teaching, uh, writing, it's in response to all of that good communal love that I've received in various places. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. Now, for before we get started, you know, how can listeners find you online? All right. Uh, there's a cookiejones.com that uh, I should be updating more than I do, <laughs> but, it's, but it's there. It's there, and it does have uh, well, it's got a lot. It's, it's got a lot of information. Awesome. Um, I, I needed to get it look, look, looking as good as your website. I checked out your, your website. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of data. I've been online just doing stuff for years now, and so there's. Um, there's a lot of information, articles, and uh, book excerpts, so people can reach me there. I'm on Facebook at uh, Yes to Grace, the yes. Facebook page. Mm-hmm. I'm on, uh, we have a Soul Talk Facebook page, and we have a, um, a, a Sacred Seven, the Sacred Seven Facebook group. And so all of those pages are directly related to books that I've written in the past, and we just sort of try to construct a community and a continual, a continuing conversation based on those books. Awesome. So you guys heard it. He has a website that you can go and check out as well as some Facebook pages and a Facebook group. Um, I will let you know that it is very inspirational to follow those pages because sometimes you just get exactly what you need um, to pop up in your Facebook feed. And so it's good to have that positive affirmation in your news feeds. But today we're going to go, we're going to talk about a couple of Dr. Jones, a couple of his books and one which I am holding in my hand, um, Soul Talk. 
how to have the most important conversation (laughs) of all. I think this is my favorite, but I haven't read your latest one. So as of now, this is my favorite book. (laughs) And um, so why this book at this particular moment in in history, Dr. Jones? Well, I'll tell you what, I just hugged you in the spirit. I just gave you a great big hug in the spirit. (laughs) There have been a few books between Rest in the Storm and this one. And to hear you say that is your favorite, that really that warms my heart. Yeah. Um, and I thank you for saying it. I this this book came as a result of a quote that's on the first few pages of the book. And um Howard Thurman, one of mm-hmm. you know, our great leaders and still inspiring so many people. He he had a quote, uh, Pastor Eva, that stuck with me. There is something, and here's the quote, there is something that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide that you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, you will all of your life spend your days on the ends of strings mm. that somebody else pulls. That's that, powerful. That right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, been, I keep, I, like, like many of us do, I keep quotes, and that's in my top ten. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that sound of the genuine, wow, just stuck with me. And it's been many years ago, and and I, you know, I've read all the sermon books. I've taught sermon at the Andover Theological School, where I taught for many years, and so I've just been blessed by this this mentor, mm-hmm. and in particular this quote. I end up as a pastor bringing this quote up uh, when people were seeking guidance for some sort of you know breakthrough, some decision they had to make. Uh, regarding relationships or, or a job or, you know, their, their calling. And I call them to listen to the sound of the genuine inside. What is the sound of the genuine? And we talk about that. And uh, I begin to begin to ask, well, how can I help persons listen to the sound of the genuine more? How can I more intentionally and purposefully listen to the sound of my genuine in, my, in myself? Mm-hmm. Uh, is that, what's the connection between that and the soul? And so one thing just led to the other, and I write to explore. I don't write because I know, but I write to know. Mm. Uh, and so the book came out of uh, an appreciation for that quote and a desire to explore the parameters of the sound of the genuine inside of my, myself. Thus, uh, out in the world, what is now publicly known as Pastor Eva's fa- favorite book, favorite church Jones book, <laughs> Yes. And it's so yeah. important, um, this book at this particular time, because we have so much that comes at us. We have social media, TV, oh cell phones. Yeah. It's like always receiving information. But if you're always receiving information, you know, how can you hear your own voice? That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. We're, we are bombarded uh, by all kinds of from, from the moment we get up to the, to the time we go to bed at night, that marketing messages, social media, you're right. Mm. So if we're, if we, if we, if we're going to have, if we have any chance at all, <laughs> that's sanity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not just surviving, but thriving. We've got to learn to listen to that inner voice, to be still and know that God is God, and to be still and know the voice of God inside of us. Wow. That's essential. That's essential. We that have is. to or else we're done for. That's right. So we can I don't wanna I don't wanna sound morbid but morbid, but if you cannot listen and if you don't know how to listen, uh and we we'll talk about the seven steps. I I, I introduced seven steps for this thing. Mm-hmm. If if you if you if you hear every other voice, Pastor Eva, wow. every other voice, but you miss that one. Well mm-hmm. Jesus put it this way, what is it for the person to gain the whole world? Lord have mercy. And, and, and lose your soul, lose contact with your soul, lose resonance with your soul, lose lose a sense of rapport with your soul. You can have everything else, and if you don't have that, it's like you have nothing at all. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so, got seven soul talk steps that this book is, yeah. you know, is guided by. And is there any particular step that you want to expound on? Uh, <laughs> yeah, all of them. <laughs> well, we got we got thirty we got thirty minutes. Uh, well, now we got about fifteen minutes. Uh, you know what? I'll just give them. Be still, labor. Be still. One, labor and down two. Listen deeply. Three, don't run away. Four, be honest. Five, six, be gentle. 
seven welcome new troops. Yeah. Oh man, these are all of these are just <laughs> on any given. And I tell people it's not going to be like you know every time you have a soul talk session, which can be as little as five seconds to you know an hour mm-hmm. or longer. Um, it's not going to be that you're going to go through these seven steps in chronological order. But as I was rehearsing uh, the dimensions of my soul talk experience, these are the things that came to fore as being repeated pattern, repeated depth um, that, that, that would, ha- would occur in my soul talk, and, and thus they became the seven soul talk steps. I guess if I had to talk about one, and we were going to talk <laughs> about one, it would, it would be the be still. Yes, <laughs> it would be the first one. The first one. Yeah, yeah. It all starts with stillness. Yeah. Um, and for some, it's harder than others. Yeah. For some, there are physiological challenges mm-hmm. that prevent it, you know, but most of us uh, don't experience as much of it as we can because we don't practice it. Mm-hmm. And like anything else, the more you practice it, yes. the uh, you know the easier, yes. the easier it becomes. <laughs> yes, and so I one of the things I've done to kind of um, help myself practice being still is I have a timer on my phone, and I first started with five minutes. And as time went on, get to 10 minutes. And, yeah. you know, when you have a timer set, you're not having to worry about the clock or what time it That's is. Right. And so 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And after a while, if you consistently, you know, for a week, focus on being still for five minutes every morning, it's easier yeah. to jump to 10 and it's easier to jump to 15 and it's easier to jump to 30. And what I found is when I started doing that, it's like yeah. not only in that time and space, it's like, just my intuition throughout the day That's it. and my sensitivity throughout today from hearing from God actually got yeah. better. And so we're going to head into a break. You guys, we're here with Kirk Byron Jones discussing a couple of his books. We'll see you on the other side of this break. Uh, com, and also on Facebook at uh, the Soul Talk Facebook page. And there's a Yes to Grace Facebook page, and there's a Sacred Seven uh, Facebook group. So uh, I can be found in those ways. Also, I want to name the church. I'm 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 blessed to, to pastor yes. as well, and so I'm pastor of uh, Zion Baptist Church in Lynn, Massachusetts. And I think uh, there's some. I think we're on. I know we're online there too. So our site is there as well. That's Love awesome. To hear from you. Awesome, awesome. And so we were just talking about the first. Um, of this first of the seven soul talk steps be still and one of the things that I was um, just kind of saying even you know kind of affirming this chapter is that you know as I started giving more time to being still in the morning um, that my intuition my ability to hear clearer throughout the day and stay centered and just the it just even the level of revelation I got from God, even in visions and dreams, just started to increase as I started to be intentional about not taking so much in, but listening to what God and even my own voice was saying to me. And, and I say amen, a thousand amen to that. <laughs> uh, in, the, in the book, I talk about the benefits to soul talk, and we don't have enough time to get into all the benefits. But one of them is uh, clarity. Um, when you mention the intuition, that's just so amazing. Uh, when when we are still for, for just that short span of time, then the impact is cumulative. And you know, you keep on practicing that, which is a pause, which is the, uh, how the sermon called stillness, a cessation, a cessation, or a stopping of inner churning. Mm-hmm. You get used to that, and all of a sudden, you you do find yourself. And you're right on with that, Pastor Eva. You find that your listening capacity has been enhanced automatically, mm-hmm. and and you be, you can begin to hear inner whispers, uh, more sensitive to what some people call the gut. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I call it the voice of God inside of you. All of a sudden, uh, you be, you 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 become attuned to these cues that I I think are coming all the time. Yes. You know, God is so merciful and gracious. God doesn't hold back guidance and wisdom uh, or just kind of piecemeal it out. I think that wisdom and that guidance is is at the ready, uh, 
problem is we're running. That's right. <laughs> you know, we're running and we're harried and we're overloaded and we miss mm. those cues. And so that stillness, thank you for saying what you're saying, because it's that stillness moment. You keep doing that and all of a sudden a new dimension of living opens up. And you can have access to deep guidance uh, like like never before. That's right. And so there's one of the seven that I think when I first saw the book and I read it, I was like, well, now what is this about? The one that that? says, (laughs) don't run away. Can you talk about that just for a little bit? Don't run away. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you want to go there? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, goodness. That don't run away. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. What's his name? Anthony Mm -hmm. DeMello. His book is called Awareness. And uh, and uh, let me say it succinctly. Anthony DeMello says that most of us that live our lives totally asleep. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, we, we sleepwalking through life. And and the only way that we wake up is, it, the, 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 the indicator is how much new truth we are willing to accept without oh. running away. Mm-hmm. Okay, without running away. And so that not running away is that when when uh, I found in my so-called time when I'm uh, there will there will be things that will come to surface. Uh, maybe uh, it's a, a, a challenge or a new uh, a challenge in terms of a new habit that I need to form, or a weakness that I have that needs working on, or maybe somebody that I have wronged, maybe it's some bitterness that I'm carrying. You name it. Mm. Uh, and so when that comes to four, and it might make me a little queasy and uncomfortable, the challenge is to stay there. Stay there for a moment. Stay with the discomfort for a moment. Because on the backside of the discomfort is the, ba- the breakthrough that can make all the difference in the world, that can uh, bring about transformation. We've got to befriend that which wow. uh, troubles us often in order to experience the, the breakthrough. So that's what that not running away is all about. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. And so, and just being you know, fully human, you talk about that here. Yeah. Um, just got to be f- fully human and the range of emotions that we feel and sitting with and being honest with our ourselves, our soul about Absolutely. where we really That's are. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> I don't think human, being human is just some sort of side stop on the way to heaven mm. uh, you know uh, the glo- one one great uh, Irenaeus the early church father said that the glory of God is a person fully alive uh, and so that being human I mean God God got got such a kick out of humanness that God decided to experience it God mm. himself and that's what the incarnation is all about wow. You know, God God didn't just come and try to save life, but to savor, to savor life, to enjoy life, and to experience life. So every life in, in all of its dimensions, uh, you know, including those things that trouble us, matter, matter. Mm. And I think Soul Talk is another opportunity to sit with what matters. Wow. Because when we don't sit with what matters, then before you know it, what doesn't matter at all has its way with us. Wow. Sit with yep. what matters. That's that's a lot. Yep. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> now, before I know you wrote another book, um, Water to Wine. Before we go into that, I wanted to ask you a question. So one of the styles, writing yep. styles I noticed in your books, you always start with um, quotes or quotes that may mm-hmm. be by another author. It may be a passage of scripture. You know, what kind of yep. influenced that side of you? Of you? I missed that, Eva. What kind of influence is that side of you in, in your writing to, to just kind of begin your chapters with quotes? Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm a reader. Mm-hmm. I'm a reader, and that's why I, I'm on to you, too. So you're putting down some stuff on Facebook. I, I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> There's, you know, I, I love, oh, my God, Nettie Okorafor, who's an absolutely wonderful, absolute wonderful writer, novelist. Nettie Okorafor has this wonderful line, words are powerful when chosen well and hurled with precision. Mm. Words are powerful when chosen well and hurled with precision. You know, I've always, always been um, a lover Mm. of phrases and words. 
So I love poetry. I love reading. Me too. Um, I love, yeah, I love <laughs> reading. I can explore. I can expand. Exploring new ideas, exploring new experiences. That kind of stuff just turns my soul on. Mm-hmm. And so part of when that comes to my writing, um, that's, it's the natural overflow of my love of reading. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so this week, I know you have a, a new book to drop. I, I went out and went and got on Amazon and ordered, pre-ordered the Kindle version. So whenever yes, that yes, comes yes. through. So I want you to talk about Water to Wine. You know, I haven't been able to read it, but I, I, I saw some <laughs> of the Facebook live streams about it. Right. So yeah. talk about the premise behind this book and, you know, why now? Why did you write that book now? Oh, man. Uh, you know what? That book stuck up on me. Uh, even since I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to take a break from publishing this year. Oh wow! Okay, and uh, so all of a sudden, at our church, we were, we were on um, focusing on just one thing, changing just one thing to begin the new year. Mm-hmm. Okay, just focus on one change, whatever. Wow! So we had this just one thing campaign, and it was pastors' job to formulate a series of sermons on change. I get to the the wedding at Cana. Mm. And it just just started giving me stuff. And so, water to wine uh, is is uh, the, the five levels of marvelous change: imagination, desire, mm. focus, effort, and perseverance. Imagination, desire, focus, effort, and perseverance. So the book came out of treating it as Zion wow. and having Zion members list. I could almost hear them listening to them. Mm-hmm. You know, as a preacher, when you can hear folk listening, and then they pepper you with questions after, you know, not just pass a good sermon, but pastor, what do you mean by this? So mm. that, and then I would go on Soul Talk, you know, the, the, the ministry that we have uh, Saturday now, Saturday night Soul Talk, and then I put it out there, and so all of a sudden, I'm <laughs> this book is formulated, and people on Soul Talk are saying, well, is there going to be a book? So I had, I had this question. <laughs> the book is dedicated, and it's just about 60 pages. It's not a long book, mm-hmm. and, the, and the price is, is reflective of that. It's just a short uh, summary of these, these, these level, levels and levels and stages of change, evident in the changing of water to wine, that we can practice today. We can practice imagination. We can practice desire, focus, effort, and perseverance. And when those five things come together... You got, you, got, uh, you got new wine. You got new wine. You got new wine. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> when is that going to be available for us to get? End of February. End of the, February. Uh, yep. The date of the Kindle version is, is, is published and people can pre-order. It's February 28th. Okay. So, and Amazon doesn't let you off. It's got to drop on February 28th. <laughs> <laughs> and so it will probably, it will probably, I'm putting the finishing touches on it now. Okay. And so it will it'll probably be out before that. If people want to get a, a, a sampling, you can always go to the Soul Talk page and listen to the five, I did five 30 minute um, video, um, Facebook videos on each one of those, those uh, levels. Okay. So people just go to Facebook and just work their way really back. We finished up last Saturday for perseverance and then go back to the to the get the imagination to imagination. The book includes notes from the sermons and from sharing on Facebook, but also some things from press that uh, that came while I was writing. Them. Awesome. Well, everybody, if you're listening, we're talking to Reverend Dr. Kirk Byron Jones. We just talked about two of his books. Um, You can find this book on Amazon, Water Into Wine, and also all of his books. Just go out there and look up Kirk Byron Jones, and you'll find all of his books. But all of them will bless you. Um, Kirk, it has been great talking to you today. And until we talk again or, or see each other on Facebook again, I pray that God blesses you and keeps you. Thanks for listening to Unleashed with Eva. I hope you were inspired, encouraged, and motivated to tackle a new week. For more information about the show, check out www.evamelton.com. 